In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a, a space between the beginning and the end of an X scale. Here, as you can see here, we removed the grid line and we have some additional space on both sides. So let's start to look how we can do this. So let's start to look how to add the space between start and end of an X scale in ChartJS. So the first thing that we need is we need to get our boiler template, which you can find here on ChartJS3.com, getting started. This specific link, which you can find as well in the description box. So once you're on here, copy this chunk of code. And if you want to understand this code, please watch this video here that explains it all. So to paste it in here, cut out the title, put the title in here. Save, refresh. All right, there we are. Let's maximize the size of this. And I'm going to say here, 80%. Save, refresh. There we are. Now we have this. So the next thing what we want to do here is go on the X scale. And basically there are two things. And I'm going to use a trick here that makes it easier for us. First of all, I want to have a space between the starting and ending here. And we can do this by adding an additional value here like this. But I'm going to show you later on a, a way to do this with a program or at least with a code. So we're going to leave it like blank. If I save this, refresh, you will see here we have this. All right. We get the labels here, but you might say, why is this moving here? Because of this blank value here. So what we need to do here, comma, and we're going to say here, null. Specifically null, not zero, but null. Null means no value available in here. Now we have this here, and this looks absolutely hideous because we have this line here and the line here, and probably have too much space here. So for this, we have another option. And afterwards, we're going to work on how to make this a code. I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to say yeah, in the X scale, first of all, we're going to remove or narrow down this space here by using a simple trick, which is called offset. And we're going to set the offset on false. And what offset truly does is basically moving the segments here. And what you really will notice is that if we would have a value here, that bar would be sliced in half. And the reason why this is uh, working or like built like this is because for a line chart, the line itself or the grid line is important. But for a bar chart, we need to have space between there to put it basically in the center. So if I would remove this here, then you will see exactly what I'm talking about. Let's remove this and that. Save, refresh. So you can see here we are slicing this, or this being sliced here. Anyway, so. That's one of them, but of course we should not work like this. What I want to do here is uh, we want to grab the values and I guess we can do that here down. So I have this here and then before we load this, what I want to do here is uh, in the data, what I want to in the data here and I want to grab here the labels. And I'm going to use basically the push array. So basically the push method. And I'm going to push here, this is blank. And if I push, what will happen is the value will be added at the very end. And then if I want to do in the front, we need to do unshift. That's basically what we're doing here. So we say here data labels. We say here unshift to add a value at the very front. So once we did this, we should be able to remove this value here and there. So if I save, refresh you can see nothing truly changes but behind the scene we have done a lot same for the data and how do that from data data sets and then here data so what you can say here is let's copy this put it in there and then we the data dot data sets and this is index zero dot data and why index zero we only have a single data set here and this is an array value so we start with zero copy this I'm going to change that and I say here dot data. All right, save. And then we must say here, of course, the value must be null. So a null is considered a value on its own. So we're going to make sure we have that. Remove this and remove that. Of course, if you're going to add new values here, what you have to do here is to first pop, remove the last value, which is this blank value here the null and the blank value here and then you can add up new values in the array that's that's basically the trick so if i refresh here this all works but of course look at this grid line here this is not allowed i want to remove these grid lines here so for that what i need to do is 
in the grid lines and then we have to go here on the x-axis we're going to focus here on the grid and then within here we're going to work with the color and basically what I want to do here we're going to say a color if I do this and if I do your blue you should see now it will have a bluish color and make sure you have a comma here I notice that refresh there we are so we have this but what I want to do is I want to remove this entirely so basically I want to say we only want to have a color if we have like these items here because this one here and the Sunday or after Sunday should have no color at all it should just be gone so how do we do this well we're going to use here the color and I'm going to use basically a callback functionality in here I'm going to say CTX and then so we have this color callback functionality here and then what I want to do is here the function error expression and let's do first a console log just to see what does this CTX does so if I save this refresh open up developer and you can see the colors are disappearing and the reason why is I'm not returning anything here yet so but you can see here if I click on the object you can see here we get the index we get all this information here and probably it's every uh, specific index here let's look at this you can see here every tick is being registered and in this case of course we have uh, for every specific day and then probably it loops to it two or three times you can see here Sunday and then I guess here it loops again there we are so we have all of this information and you can see here the value is basically the index itself so let me just zoom in here just to make sure you see it so you see here this value is the index itself why this is index zero or basically here is zero one two three you can see here Monday this is Monday is value one which is index number one that is correct because we have pushed basically these values in there these uh, non values so what we want to do now is basically say all right we're going to to run through these and instead of well, when we have index zero then we want to make it transparent and next when we have index whatever the last one would be we want to have that also transparent so let's start to make one part and then after we're going to use a trick for the final part so in here I'm going to say here an if statement and this if statement will say ctx.index and again why the index because of this one here let me just refresh this all right that's more better so it's very nice and clean so we have your index zero all the way to eight but this is a trick tricky part I cannot get these individuals here it will only see these but we don't see them as an array only this part is an array but this array is just only related to the tick itself or that individual tick so this is very important to understand so well, that means that we cannot use a for each method but we can say all right if we have the last value so we have to do some other tricks for that so first of all let's put in this here then I'm going to say if it's not equal to and what I want here is well we already know that if it's not equal to let's say zero and see how that works so if it's not equal to zero in that case I want to say return and the value is the official value is RGBA and then we say here yeah, 102 comma 102 comma 102 and 0 0.1 this is the official color that chart has used save refresh so if you look at this and you say if it's not equal to zero and then you can see here we need to do one and the reason why we need to do one is because this is zero and this is the zero line or basically the tick match for the zero so this is one and this is the tick match for number one but of course I want to remove this one and that one so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say here this is equal to one save refresh all right so now we have this part and now it starts to look a bit better but how do we get this one here because if we have a dynamic we have more values or how will we get this yeah basically what we need to do is we need to know what would be the number so let's start to check here the number first let's say number eight I'm going to put this in hard coded and afterwards I'm going to soft code this save refresh we know that this is number eight and of course we could see that as well because we had this item here let me refresh there we are you can see here this is number eight so how do I get this information out there so I know exactly where to pinpoint well basically what we can do here is another trick do another console log and this console log will show us the following let's say ctx and I guess what we could do is this and well we can just do the chart first because these are together and basically we're going to do this for the call an object destructuring we're just going to, we're going to run through or within that object and then you can see here now what happens is I am now 
entering the chart object itself, which is basically this part here. But this part gives us access to everything else. And that's what I need. Because just I was restricted to specifically the grid. And I don't want that because I need to be one level up. So what I'm going to do here now is we're going to go basically, and what I mean with one level up is in the X skill. That's where I need to be because I'm right now just too deep inside of it. So how do we get here? Well, we are now in the chart. And if you look here for the letter S, you can see the scale. Then we have here the X, and there we are. Then we get here the amount of ticks, and that's what we need to know. Because this is now an array, and this array value with the index number gives us access to everything that we need. So what I'm going to do here, chart dot scales, remember, and then dot X. So if I save that, refresh now, let's see where we are. All right, and then we have to go to the ticks. Grab the ticks dot ticks save refresh all right so now we have this here what i can do here now is very simple i just do a length and then if i save that we have number nine because there are nine items but of course an array is minus one so what i'm going to do here very simple constant i'm going to give this a ticks length and then of course this is not really the ticks length maybe it should be the ticks what well, last tick index index that's much better and all i do here is minus one grab this put that in here save refresh and let's see if we have everything yes so this should be all fine and that's basically it because we have here always the beginning so number one is always a standard but then here the last one is dynamic depending on whatever the value would be so we could test this by putting here for example another value say new day and this new day, we're going to put a comma here, say 10, or let's make this again, number 9, save, refresh. There we are. This will work. We have the space being calculated at the beginning and the end, and the grid lines are being drawn only until this specific part. So that should work as well. And that's basically it. And that's how you can play around with this. So if you enjoyed this video, maybe you want to make, for example, dotted lines, like an arbitrary line. In that case, I'm going to recommend you this video here on how to create a dotted horizontal arbitrary line in Chart.js.